Welcome to my Pokemon Scarlet and Violet Wi-Fi Battle Series. Today we're having a battle against Erland and his ferocious team from the Pokemon Battle Hub Discord server. Alone and Raichu is a demon in electric terrain with the ability Surge Surf that doubles its speed in said terrain. But will it be enough to win us the game? So without further ado, let's jump into the team preview. Alright, Erland's brought a pretty powerful team with the heat around the Crocodile, Mandibuzz and DD Mail, uh, Petrunt, and of course the Haxorus. So, do we expect an Indeedee lead here? I think we do expect an Indeedee lead. I think it's a very plausible lead. Um, do we lead off with Iron Treads? I think Iron Treads is a solid lead here, to be fair. I can't see them leading anything else, so I think Iron Treads is a good lead. It outspeeds a lot of the team, except from the Indeedee, I don't think. No, Indeedee does get outsped, I believe. Um, so we outspeed the entire team with uh, Iron Treads, so it's a good lead. We can get Stealth Rock Salt, which would be nice, and then we'll just get, kind of go from there. And the battle begins. Good luck, have fun, Erland. So they're going to lead off with Indeedee, as I expected, as I lead off with my Hot Wheels Beat That. Uh, the Iron Tread. So, obviously, they're going to get the Psychic Surge. Up it stops um, priority moves for a start. And also, it'll, um, we can just Ice Spinner it away, to be fair. Uh, I do want to get my Stealth Rocks up, though. So, I'm going to go ahead and do that real quick. Um, hopefully, they don't outspeed and go for uh, Expanding Force. Um, they do withdraw the Indeedee. They don't want to get hit by a knockoff, which is fair enough. And they're going to go to Mandibuzz. Mandibuzz makes a lot of sense because they can probably go for a Defog here. The problem they've got there is Defog will clear away the uh, Psychic Terrain. So... If we assume they're going to go for a defog here, like I do, I do predict they will, and um, we should switch out. So I'm leaning towards the pink kitchen to get my own electric terrain up. But then again, they just bring the Indeedee in and, you know, dominate from there. So um, over option is just going straight to right you with the heels of a knockoff. It's going to sting. So I think I will go pink kitchen here. I think that's my best option. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Uh, pink kitchen can come in or oh, get all spiny over here. There we go. Get the electric terrain up, which is going to be benefiting for us uh, a lot. Provided, well, they're going, to, they're going to defog anyway, so it doesn't matter. But they go for a defog. They get rid of the uh, stealth rocks, and then they also get rid of the electric terrain, which is unfortunate, but it is what it is. My main priority here is not to get the electric terrain up just yet, um, but just to hit this thing really hard with a discharge. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. They do go for a U-turn, probably into the crook, if I had to guess. They get a crit, which is unfortunate. But you know what? It's not the end of the world. Um, and then they're probably going to bring the Crook in, right? Yeah, Crook now comes in. That's fine. Uh, maybe I should have gone for a Skull predicting that, but it's, it's, it's whatever. Uh, Discharge comes through and doesn't have enough into the Crookedile, which is fine. Now, if we assume they're going to go straight for the kill here, we should go into our Moltres. Um, I am going to go Moltres. It's the most obvious play, but at the same time, it's still our best play because I highly doubt they'll go for a Stone Edge against the Pink Urchin that could potentially Scold them. All right, there we go. Withdrawing Spiny. Come on back. Go into our Moltres against the Crocodile, which is going to be ideal here. Um, they do go for a knockoff, which is going to sting a little bit. Not too much, though. And we might get the Flame Body. We don't get the Flame Body, which is unfortunate, but it's whatever. Um, we're definitely going to see a Heatran switch here, so I'm going to go for a U-turn real quick. They do withdraw the Crocodile, which is fantastic. What are they going to go into, though? They go into Heatran, as expected. That's great. So we get a free switch in on the uh, Heatran, which is fantastic. So... U-turn is going to break um, a potential Sash, which it probably isn't Sash, but you know what, it's whatever. Um, we'll also see if the leftovers or not, based on their health they've got left. So, I'm leaning towards the Iron Valiant here to go straight for a close combat. And I am going to go with the Iron Valiant. Um, Seraphim over here, nice and shiny. This is your first time seeing this shiny, but there, that's the shiny I came up with for Iron Valiant. I think it looks pretty cool, personally, but, you know, some people might not. And they are leftovers, which is good to know. Now, do we go straight for a close combat here, or do we go for a sword dance? Now, close combat will KO, but they may, they may go for a flash cannon, which is going to be risky for us. So, if we're risky for a biscuit, we could go into... Mm, risky for a biscuit, we could get... What's their switch in here? Petra run, right? They always go Petra run here. So, let's go for a knockoff. They do withdraw the Heatran. Are we going to see a Petra run switch? That'd be ideal. Petrun does come in, which is fantastic. We get a free knockoff on that. There we go. Knockoff comes through. And if we did Swords Dance there, then that would have been even better. But we knock off their Black Sludge, so we know they're not going to Terra. Well, they might Terra now, but um, they wouldn't have done before. So, right. If we assume they're going to try and poison us here, or Hex us, or whatever they want to go for, we should go into Iron Treads, which is exactly what I'm going to do here. So, Iron Treads can come in and uh, take on this Petrun, no problem. If they go for a Hex... It'll activate our eject button and we'll get switched out, so that's fine. We'll get a free switch in with something else. Um, but they do go for a parting shot, which is going to lower our offenses just a little bit. 
Um, but now they get a free switch in. Now, what are they going to go into there? That's the real question. I'd say the mandibles was probably the most obvious thing. Um, but the mandibles will probably go for a U-turn on us, if anything. So let's see what happens. All right, Crookedile comes in. So is this thing going to be scarfed? Is the real question. Are they scarfed? I'm going to guess that they are, based on the fact that they brought it in. So I'm going to go back into Moltres here. I think Moltres is a sound switch. I think they go for an earthquake this time. So um, if we go to Moltres real quick, we can just go for another U-turn. I have a feeling they're scarfed based on, by, by the fact that they brought that in there. They go for a bulk up, so they're not scarfed, which is great. But they got a bulk up up, which is terrifying. Um, which means knockoff might KO us. But also they could tear a dragon. Let's go for a Will-O-Wisp because we can't play around with this uh, bulk up in Crooked R real quick. They go for a scale shot, which is, of course, not going to KO us because we're defensive AF. Um, may also lower their defenses, which would be nice. And unless they get two crits here, which it looks like they haven't. They only hit four times as well. We lower their defenses, but we do boost their speed with a scale shot. Can I hit this Will-O-Wisp? We do hit the Will-O-Wisp, which is nice. So they're obviously loaded dice. So we don't have to worry about Lumberry here, which is great. And Crookedile is not going to appreciate that burn, that's for sure. So... Um, knowing that the burn now and this next scale shot probably won't be able to KO us either. Uh, we should go for a roost here, which is exactly what I'm going to do. Scale shot comes through again. That's fine. I'm pretty confident we can live one of these. Or four of these even. I'm not sure actually now. Because if they get a crit. Oh, it's close. It's. No, we, we unfortunately lose Moltres there. But you know what? It's fine. Um, they are weakened with the burn. And they have a lowered defense now. So we can definitely do some stuff there. And um, what we can do is we can go into our nice and powerful oh Moxie as well. Oh, that was terrifying. Terrifying. It would be more terrifying if it didn't have a burn. But anyway, they're probably Terror Dragon. So I don't I think if we went into Iron Valiant here, they wouldn't terror. They wouldn't terror if we went into Iron Valiant, that's for sure. Because they'd still be weak to Moonblast. We don't have Moonblast, we have close combat. So I think, I think Valiant is the best play here. Because they have Scale Shot, Bulk Up, Knock Off, and definitely Earthquake. So Earthquake is going to be their best move to go for here. I'm going to go straight for a close combat. I don't care if they Terra. I still think we'll take them out. And um, they go for an EQ. Does over half thanks to the Moxie and the Bulk Up they have. But they, the Burn holds them back. And then we're able to take them out with a clean close combat. Which is fantastic. So... Uh, Crookedile may have took out our Moltres, but we took out the Crookedile with our Iron Valiant. So this is looking pretty good so far. All right, Petra runs the one that's going to come in now. So, do we smack in the face of another knockoff or do we switch out? I'm going to go back into Iron Treads here. They more than likely go for a parting shot once again, but their Crookedile is gone. So Iron Treads is doing pretty good here. So we'll withdraw. Like so. And we're going to Hot Wheel. Like so. There we go. They go for a recover. That's fair. Recovery is a fair play. Now, they probably go into Mandibles here. They probably go into Mandibles here, but I'm going to go for a Stealth Rock anyway. Um, just because it'll give us a free switch in with Raichu if they go Mandibles. Um, see, I'm going to go for a Stealth Rock. I don't see any reason not to. They've stayed in. They've gone for the ballsy play and stayed in. I could have gone for an EQ there. And done some serious damage to this Petra Runt. Um, they go for a Parting Shot, which is fine. And then they're probably going to go Mandibles. Like I said before, Mandibles seems like the most optimal play to go for here. So back to it. Back goes Petron. And then we're going to see a Mandibles switch, right? We've got her. All right, Mandibles comes in. As predicted, but there's not much I can do about it because they're going to go for a Defog here. Um, so am I better off going into Raichu and Thunderbolting this thing or Volt Switching even better? Um, I think I am. I think so. Yeah, I'm going to go Raichu. I think Raichu's a good switch because they're definitely going to go for a Defog here. They kind of have to to get rid of them Stealth Rocks. So we're going to cheese the Raichu. They do go for a Defog, which is fantastic. Now, obviously, they they have got switch-ins here, um, being the Heatran. So I'm going to predict the switch into Heatran. I'm going to go for a Volt Switch real quick. Volt Switch comes through. Does over half, which is fantastic. They either go for a knockoff or a U-turn here. We've already seen U-turn. We haven't seen knockoff yet. Um, so we've seen defog and U-turn. So I think it, we're better off going into... Ah, I know what we can do here. We'll go into Iron Treads and we'll get the eject button on the U-turn. And then their U-turn will fail. They go for the U-turn. That's going to activate our eject button. Which means that their U-turn is going to fail. 
which means we get a free switch back into Alolan Raichu to go for another, well, to go for a Thunderbolt. Uh, and that is exactly what I'm going to do here. So Raichu, you can come back in. I think we played that just, not, just right there. There we go. They didn't get to switch out. So we go for a Thunderbolt now. There's nothing that wants to switch in on this at the moment other than the Hactress potentially, but it could get paralyzed if it did. Yep, they had to stay in. They can't really do much because we could have Surf. We do have Surf um, with Terra Water as well. So Mandibles goes down, which is fantastic. We electrocuted them to death, which is amazing. And let's see what they bring in. I, I think I think if anything, they bring in the uh, Ndidi if it's... Um, no, they bring in the Hactress, the first impression of surely. All right, Heatran's the one that's coming in, which is awesome for us. So do I just stay in and go for a Terra Water Surf? Because we don't need the Electric Terrain. We outspeed everything on the team except from the first impression on the Haxorus. I say screw it. Let's go for the Terra. All right, so we're going to Terrasalize into a Water type, giving us a stab on that uh, Surf. And this should at least 2-it KO the Heatran, which would be amazing if it does. So there's the Terra Water on the right. You Now, if they Terra Grass here, predicting, predicting this, I'm going to be shocked. They don't know. We go for that Terra Water Surf, which is definitely going to do over half to the Heatran, even if it's specially defensive. Nearly gets the KO, which is fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. They go for an Earth Power, which won't finish us off. Awesome. Now all we need to do is go for a Thunderbolt, and that should finish off the Heatran, which would be fantastic, to say the least. So, um, unless they Terra Grass. I'm going to Thunderbolt anyway. I don't think they'll Terra Grass. Thunderbolt comes through, you know, just in case. I mean, Surf, Surf would have still done the job. Um, it would have hurt the Ndidi and the Petron, so it's whatever. Raichu's coming through for us right now, which is absolutely amazing. That Heatran had no chance. All right, Hexorus is coming in now. So that's fine. They're going to break the mold, which is also fine. They're going to go for a first impression or a Dragon Dance, one of the two. Um, so we have to be extremely careful with what we do here. Now, I want to go into Pink Kirch, and I really do. Um, just to go for a Memento, really. They probably go for a first impression. Let's go into Iron Treads because they probably go for a first impression here. They might Dragon Ants predicting us to switch out. Or just anticipating they can live a Psychic if they go Terra Steel here. But if they go Terra Steel, it's not that bad. They do go for a Dragon Ants, but we're only going to let them have one. Because then we can get the Pink Urchin in. We can get the Pink Urchin in. Memento on them. And then go from there. So let's go for a Ice Spinner real quick. They go for another Dragon Ants. Okay, so they are confident they can take an Ice Spinner. They, did, they haven't terra yet, I don't think. Did they Terra? They didn't Terra the Crocodile, did they? No. Or did they? Ice Spinner does a clean 50% though, which is great. They go for an EQ. That's absolutely fine by me. Take out Iron Treads. Now, the only way we're going to get past this, they're a double speed. The only way we're going to outmatch this is by going into Pink Urchin right now or the Gengar. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna save Gengar because it can do really well against the last remaining Pokemon without Focus Sash. I'm gonna go into the Pink Urchin. Now the thing about Pink Urchin is they have to attack us, or we can do some stuff. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go for a Discharge because in the Electric Terrain it's gonna do a little bit. It's gonna sting a bit. So they can't. They can't really go for a Dragon Dance here. They have to go for an EQ to take us out. They go for the EQ. That's fine. They took the bait. The KO Pink Urchin, that's absolutely fine by me. So this is great because we can now finish this Hagstress off with a um, Raichu. So we'll go Raichu now. And Raichu with Surge Surfer is double speed. And because we naturally outspeed Hagstress anyway, we should be able to get the KO here with Psychic, um, which is exactly what I'm going to do. Now, if they whip out Terra Dark here, I'm going to be very shocked and surprised and all that. But I don't think they will. Psychic comes through. We do have speed even with their plus two speed because we are also double speed right now. Haxorus goes down. Raichu's looking like the MVP of this game, which is fan bloody tastic. You've got to love it. Indeedy comes in. That's going to get rid of the electric terrain and he's going to sell for psychic terrain, which is dangerous. Especially if they're um, choice scarf. Now, if they're choice scarf, we may have lost. Um, we may have lost. So let's go for a, I think, uh, Thunderbolt Surf. I think Thunderbolt or Surf doesn't really matter. Thunderbolt can paralyze, so I may as well go for the Thunderbolt here. They are Choice Scarf, so the Expanding Force is going to come through and take us out. Which means it does all come down to Gengar. It all comes down to Gengar right now. So, that's the problem. So, Gengar or Iron Valiant won't outspeed, I don't believe. We've still got Iron Valiant, though, which is a huge plus. 
Uh, Gengar is our last bet. We have to we have to KO with Sludge Wave, which I don't think we do. Unless we can poison with Sludge Wave. Let's just try it. We, we, we've got no other choice. Indeed, he might pull this back, though. There's the Gengar. Nice and shiny. Got to love it. We go for a Sludge Wave here. Right? Right? Yeah? True? Sludge Wave. Let's go. They go for an Expanding Force. That would normally take me out, but of course I have got the Focus Sash. We could Curse Body here. We could Curse Body here, which would be clutch. We do Curse Body, which is amazing. Sludge Wave comes through. We know they're locked in. That's going to do over half, which is fantastic. So now uh, we go for a Shadow Ball because they have to switch into Petrun or they lose their Indeedee, one of the two. They do withdraw the Indeedee. We're going to get Petrun KO, which is fantastic. But unfortunately, this does mean when Indeedee comes back in, it's going to be an epic Indeedee comeback. So Shadow Ball comes through, predicting the Indeedee to get the Petrun to come in. Cleanly nearly KOs, which is fantastic. Um... Do we predict the... They might go into a DD again. Screw it. Let's go for a Sludge Wave. Yeah, we go for a Sludge Wave here. The KO is the Petrun anyway. And um, it, just in case they went back into a DD predicting the Shadow Ball again. You know? So that's unfortunate that we do lose this game. But I think we did really well because we've got we've got 60 seconds left. This has been a real nail buyer of a game. That's for sure. Let's go for that Sludge Wave just in case. Um, but they do go for the Expanding Force, of course, which is going to take us out. And then we've got uh, Iron Valiant in the back, which is also going to down to the Expanding Force. So that, unfortunately, is going to be the game. But you know what? This was a, a ridiculously good battle. And I, I've not had a good battle like this in, in a while because it's harder to find people to battle nowadays. Um, but you know what? I really enjoyed this one. So Iron Valiant comes in nice and shiny. We go for a knockoff just in case. They obviously outspeed us, though, because of the Choice Scarf. And that is going to be the game. So GG Erland. Really fun one. Definitely a nail buyer. Gotta love it. Thank you so much for watching today's battle. If you did enjoy, of course, leave a like, subscribe, all that wonderful stuff. Try the team out using the rental code on screen now. And with that being said, I'll see you on the next battle.